anything, even after seeing everyone suffer and live in this state of ruin. Maybe I become ruined inside because the earthquake occurred and ruined the outside world. My inorganic character is only slightly unpleasant now, and I don't have any feelings about it. But I'm slightly sad that I couldn't keep my promise with Mother to go home for New Year's, even though she called me many times since autumn about it. The town has been destroyed and many lively people died. It's strange how someone half dead like me survived to live in this vigorous world where everybody is so frantic. But I guess it's nothing strange considering what I've seen and experienced until now. This isn't a this isn't a rational place. I understand. I understand, but I don't like it. I think it would have been better for me to die. Amako san, who I met again after a long time, has not changed all that much. I even recognized him when I first saw him. He probably thinks that he changed a lot, but that's wrong. His performance certainly changed. The performance he let me hear was very skilled, but it lacked something. It's a normal, good performance. The piece he played one-handed sounded like back then, but it's still somehow different. If that was the performance I heard when I was a child, I probably would have, wouldn't have stopped playing the piano. <clears throat> she know that as well. I believe this enemy is himself back when he was a child. If that's the case, Amako san will probably lose. The performance back then was not something a normal human could accomplish. He might be fighting against the same fear I felt back then. Yeah, the world can do that to you, man. It's like, yeah, it's like just reading this. It's like, yeah, the world does do that to a person. It's like. When you're younger, you're like, you know, you're full of hope and dreams and you can do pretty much anything you want to, right? But then after a certain period of time, when real life starts to kind of like build up against you, it kind of takes over and it kind of kills everything <laughs> you believed in before. Because basically real life is like this. Real life is like, it's a, uh, it's kind of like a, well... I can't explain it. Real life is structured in a way that kind of makes it like, it's okay not to have dreams. It's okay to kind of follow a set path. It's okay to leave a life of monotony because basically real life is like you pay bills, you eat, sleep, you have a family that's pretty much it anything beyond that that is extra you don't have to do that that's like yeah that's going beyond the state of normality so yeah when you're a kid you can do like pretty much anything you want to because you know you're like you don't have you're not like tied down by life <laughs> but then when you are it kind of changes your perspective and like your uh, priorities so it kind of changes your behavioral patterns and it makes you an even duller person for the most part Mostly, that's what I think. So yeah, that's probably what happened. <laughs> he might be fighting against the same fear I felt back then. Thinking about it this way, I kind of think it serves him right. But only slightly. More importantly, I wonder if he would turn out like I am right now if he loses just like I did. I don't know if I want to see that spectacle or not. But I think we can be together forever if it happens. It may be boring like ice melting in the water, but I do believe that it will be peaceful and quiet. But Amako-san hasn't changed at all if you look at him as a whole. He's still scary and hard to understand. Amako-san is unreasonable in many senses, and I don't understand him, but I like him. I think I like him. Maybe I don't, but I don't really know. Anyway, he's the most important person to me. Oh, he's about to get stolen away from you, <laughs> girl. You just don't know. <laughs> that priestess at the other camp. She's making moves on him. <laughs> well, she's trying to make moves on him. She, she has no game whatsoever. See, how can you fuck up a bath? It's like, come on. She's like, she walks into. It's like, it's the perfect setting. He's, uh, he's injured. He's in a wheelchair. He needs help with a bath. So basically, he's going to be naked. How about you go in there? You get naked with him. And then, you know, some stuff kind of happens. You know, maybe, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> That didn't happen. 
Say somebody should have taught this girl something about how to seduce people. <laughs> Night wears in the school. My space has Arway Chance and Hibari's belongings from when they used to be here. It's big enough for three people, too. Using this big space all for myself. The notebook Arway Chan always used to hang around her neck catches my attention. I pick it up and flip through the pages. Inside are words that Arway Chan always uses, such as coffee and thank you. I keep flipping through the pages, thinking that the words Arway Chan speaks are almost all in here. And on the last pages are just words. To the person who found this notebook or who is caring for Arway. The handwriting looks feminine and kind. Arway's old sister must have written this. This notebook is called a communication book, and it is something very important for Arway. If this notebook is lost, please use the contact information below. If Arway is lost along with the notebook, please also use the contact information below. If Arway pouts, please care for this notebook and listen to her. Arway can communicate and will be able to calm down if you can take your time and listen to her. Arway cannot communicate well because she thinks and feels differently from other people. So she may be talking in a very different sense even when she is talking the same language as we do. She may do the same things we do with a completely different reasoning behind it. So please do not get mad at her even if you don't understand her. Please do not get mad at her even if Arway does something strange, does something strange or surprising. Even if Arway allows it, please do not do something you would not do to a normal person. Arway cannot tell right from wrong. Even if it is something that wouldn't make a normal person happy. Please do not do it if I always shows dislike. I always may not like the same things we do. I always different even when she may seem just like us. You know, this would be better if it was like in her voice. <laughs> I always is. I closed the notebook there. I can't make myself read on. She is the chosen one. We have less of. Uh, yeah, surprise, surprise! Yes, Snake Chan, where's the fucking food? <laughs> Wait, you control everything now, so where's our food? Where's the grub, man? Where are our resources? Why could you be like Tanamura san? Why'd you have to chase him out? Why'd you get jealous? Where's your girlfriend, huh? What's she doing? She sitting on her throne? She playing the game? Oh, I kind of said that up wrong. It's like, what? She's sitting on her iron throne. She's playing the game. <laughs> we have less food now. People at the Vigilante Court encourage us, saying that we would be able to go look for food again and have enough food once the conflict ends, but everyone at the school knows that it's only to console us. There'd be no reason to fight if, if there's that much food. We cannot reach a compromise in spite of people dying frequently because the problem is critical. But nobody talks about it because it does no good to say anything about it. Everyone says that the Daichi society should go away and that everything would go smoothly if they didn't exist. I don't know if they really mean it or not. Dude, they have plenty of food. <laughs> it's just your cat's the problem. <laughs> the people at the Vigilante Corps are screaming gallantly and training in the school yes, while we're preparing breakfast. Kubagata san is wearing his blood covered jacket and ordering everybody energetically. Quake and Nozomi sign is sitting on a platform a bit away from them and watching. See? Fucking see! Oh! Oh! Bitch! He's <laughs> sitting on an iron throne! Oh! Fucking called it! Oh, shit. She pushed him up for that shit. What a snake! Quake and Nozomi is sitting on a platform a bit away from them and watching them. She's. Breathing on her own hands from time to time. This is the normal morning scenery. After breakfast, Kogata san tells everyone what happened until yesterday and what we should watch out for today. He tells us that one of the hostages tried to run away and a member of the Vigilante Corps was injured. He didn't say anything about the hostage, but I'm sure he was executed. He then tells us that we're getting dangerously low on fuel, so we need to refrain from using it as much as possible. He also tells us that. 
they saw people at the Daichi Society around here, so we should try not to be alone outside or even inside the premise. Then he tells us to keep the whistles they distributed on us at all times and to blow them when something happens. Whistle blowers! Then, after he tells us everything, we all give a silent prayer to everyone who died during the dispute. And the morning ritual ends by going to help clean up the dishes and wash the utensils. Dude, you should have left with the uh, with the bari. <laughs> Seriously, Tintano could have had like a harem romance or something. <laughs> I look at the see Koike san who is standing where they are filling lunchboxes with food. The lunches are for the vigilante corps members who are to guard outside, and it seems she's complaining that it's not enough. It's true that the lunch isn't enough for a man who's moving around a lot, but there is an explanation for okay. It's true that the lunch isn't enough for a man who's moving around a lot, but there's an explanation for the, from the one who's preparing the lunch as well. First of all, there's not enough food at the school and everybody knows about this. Quake san gets mad at the rebuttal. そんなの言い訳です。だって警備をする自警団の方々が食べるものなんですよ。彼らが命を張ってくれているから私たちは毎日安全に生活することができているんじゃないですかもしあの連中が一遍に学校を襲ってきた時自警団の方々がお腹が減って満足に働けないとなったらどうなると思います yeah, this is starting to turn into Game of Thrones. Then <laughs> like, what, you want this sinking ship? Go ahead, take it. <laughs> wow. Dude, it was like... It's that like, dude, I can still remember Quake when, uh... She was being gang raped by those by those guys, man, that building. And she went from that to this now. <laughs> Holy shit. Wow. <laughs> Quickie sign ignores everyone's eyes on her and fears the complaints. The one she's talking to seems to want to object, but she seems over over raw. What? Over odd. She swallows her words and starts to obey Quickie sign. Like she mercilessly ends the conversation and leaves for the school building. An unpleasant mood remains. The woman family launches murmurs. Everyone seems to be critical against the san Even though what she said is right, she shouldn't have said it like that. Everyone says that she uh, she's con ah. Everyone says that she's conceited. Because her man is the leader. Oh! <laughs> wow. Okay, okay, okay. We gotta read this right now. The woman filling her lunch. Okay, the woman filling the lunch is. Oh. The woman filling the lunch is murmurs. Everyone seems to be critical against Kwaki san. Even though what she said is right, she shouldn't have said it like that. Everyone says that she's conceited because her man is the leader. Nobody is on her side. Kwaki san isn't popular, and some are also talking badly about Kwakata san. Oh shit! Oh shit! <laughs> oh shit! Do you have an opinion, Yuka? I'm troubled. I don't feel dis uh, detestment towards Koki San or Koki San. First of all, I can't hold any ill will towards others. Everyone is an amazing person who works hard to live, unlike me. Wow. I smile to evade the question, but she still urges me to answer. <laughs> I answer honestly. I don't think I said something extraordinary, but she looks troubled. I understand that it's not that they want to truly talk bad about her, they just want to feel connected by themselves in the same thing. You know what I mean? I'd be as 
bad as a bar. Yeah, I, don't, I also don't like the feminine, this feminine feeling. It's something detestable about women. It's strange. This reminds me of how my class was back in high school. I wonder if it would have been better for me to leave the school with a bar. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've been saying that shit since day one. It's like, yeah, big groups, big problems. So, yeah, it's better to be on your own. Man, if you're going to be with a group, just be with them, like, temporarily. Like, okay, I'm just going to be here for a while. Then I'm just going to kind of kind of fade out. Tamar Moore, he was chased up by Kuwagata. So, yeah, he's like, I got the fuck out. And I took a bar with me. Because, <laughs> you know, because, you know, if you saw her at that uh, at that hot springs, oh, hell yeah. <laughs> I'm in charge of the animals now that Hibari is gone. I'll go inside the fence and empty the dry food into the snow. The hungry dogs usually come running at once, but there aren't. That means today for some reason. A few friendly ones come to me, but they only wipe their tails and nose against my leg without looking at the food. Are they sick or something? Even if that's the case, I don't think all the dogs will suddenly get sick over one night. And they're perfectly normal except for the fact that they don't seem to be hungry. While I wonder, I pet the dog wanting attention. I don't really like dogs because I can't find them cute. They have sharp teeth and move quickly like beasts after all. I still wonder, even though we're a bit more intimate now. These animals were scary powers. These animals with scary powers get so happy when I play with them just a little. Why are they like this? Do they get happy when their master touches them because they have a good social nature? Because they have a social nature. Even if that's the case, why do they think someone clumsy like me is their master? I just don't understand them. No matter how I think about it, they're stronger than I am. I'm sure they can beat me if they try just a little. First of all, are they really happy from the bottom of their hearts? They may be trying to let my guard down so they can bite me. I'm a skeptic, so I can't even get let my guard down against them, even if they're playing innocently. But they really may be honest and obedient animals. In that case, I can understand that they're cute. I bet the dogs look like Think, and I remember Hibari. She's obedient to herself and cute like an animal. What is she doing now that she's alone with Tanamura-san? Are they having fun? Are they having a wonderful time together without anyone else? If that's the case, I'd be a bit jealous, but there, there'd have been no reason for me to stay behind if that wasn't the case. I hope they aren't in a fight. Tanamura-san? Tanamura-san, she was taken away like that in front of everyone. That was so cool. I'm a bit jealous. I wish Amako-san would take me somewhere. I don't know like that. <laughs> I get embarrassed. Dude, do you? Oh, I get embarrassed with what I'm pondering when I notice something. The dog who will always come running first to eat is chewing on something. The dog named Bingo is a glutton and has a habit of licking his food forever. I see. Someone must have fed them during the night so they're full, and that's why they're not eating. I can understand if that's the case, but then what were they fed? I saw the same amount of dog food compared to yesterday. And we don't have enough food for people at the school. I'll walk over to Bingo. I'll make him open his mouth. I grab his jaw. Come to think of it, I've gotten fairly used to dogs now. A piece of red meat drops out from the dog's mouth. Meat? Where did it come from? Oh, we do have meat, but we're using it sparingly because there isn't much. Oh, shit. Wow. That is okay. Oh, wow. This is good. <laughs> this is going to a dark place, I think. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh shit! Did someone secretly feed the meat to the dogs? There are some people out there who love dogs more than I can imagine. Was there such a person at this school? I don't think it's uh, it's the meat meat you eat. <laughs> I need to scold them if that's the case. I pick up the meat to figure out what kind of meat it is, but drop it in surprise.
The meat is not something we have preserved. One side is red like edible meat, but the other side is skin and nail that I'm so familiar with. It's something everybody is used to seeing and it couldn't have come from any other living things. We stopped the hostage from running away last night. So I got a son's words from this morning ring inside my head. Oh dear. This must be I feel my heart pounding. A terrible feeling runs up my spine. I squat down so I won't get hurt even if I fall. Take a canister out of my pocket and spray the content to I spray the content to my mouth. I close my eyes and stay still, and the scary feeling in my chest slowly subsides. It seems I made it through. I slowly open my eyes and see that the dogs are watching me. I take a few deep breaths, calm down, and stand back up. I feel fine now. I think this is because of my personality and not because of this medicine. Bingo is trying to pick up what he dropped, so I pick the meat up and throw it away. It draws a parabola. Okay, it draws a para- what? Parabola, not parabola. It drops. It draws a parabola through the air and falls without a sound. It's probably buried in the powder snow by now. I squat down and wipe my fingers using the snow. Bingo puts his smelly face next to me and starts licking me. Dogs are so innocent. I don't feel anything about the fact that he's licking me. I hear Koa got outside giving commands in the schoolyard. It seems the kid is starting crying in the gym. The snow is quietly falling. There's no wind today. What am I hearing right now? That's not wind. <laughs> it's like, it's like, she's like, there's no wind today. And in my ear, there's wind blowing. So, mm, yeah. Mm. <laughs> While I let the dog lick my face, I'm wondering how long this is going to continue. Okay, finally we go back to the better camp. <laughs> so things are going to hell with the Corgana situation. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's look at some casa. But in the meantime, I'm going to take a quick break uh, to kind of check the audio on the video, make sure it's going through okay and all that jazz. So I'll be right back, and I'll probably let the dog in too. So you know, you can actually see me. So all right, I'll be right back. So I am going AFK. I'm going with AFK. Well, damn, I can't really. There we go. Quick save. It saved quick. 